All right, welcome to Contractor Fight TV. This is part two of my interview on how to grow your contracting business using Instagram with Matt Heiner. And um, before we ended episode number one, I said the first question we were gonna ask Matt uh, is a really intimate one. And uh, so stay tuned for that coming up, let's go. So Matt's still giggling over the question. If he had to be, if he was changed into the opposite gender, which would be from a male to a female, just to be clear. Okay. I guess we have to these days. <laughs> um, it, for one day, if you were changed to the opposite gender, what would you wear? <laughs> <laughs> something comfortable. Something comfortable. Give, give huh? me like one of those maxi dresses or something. Yeah. That just looks... Yeah. Pretty, pretty comfortable. Let the junk just kind of fly around. I don't know, know, man. I see. Maybe get a nice breeze up there. Yeah, I see you in some Daisy Dukes and some <laughs> cowboy boots, man. You would like so. to see that, wouldn't you? <laughs> so listen, that question is a shout out to my buddy Travis Brown. He's uh, he's the guy that runs our podcast producing and stuff. He's he's done it for years, and um, and his company's called Podcast Buddy. And uh, this is not a sponsorship. Really. This is just me giving Travis. He's done so much great stuff for us, and he has a kick-ass new app. So for anybody that's a podcaster, he has a new app called Pod Decks, where you have all these different decks of cards on your phone that you could flip through at different topics to ask questions. And that that's one of them. And and I'll, I'll probably throw another one your way uh, here before we get out yeah. of here. But so guys, um, we're talking about growing your business on Instagram. Uh, we've kind of talked about some other things. We're going to get into some non-Instagram things here soon. But before we do that, um, what is the what's the voodoo with the hashtags? Like, how do you know what hashtag to use? Um, I, I heard on, I think it was social media examiner. I was listening to their podcast on a last week or something. And some chick was on there talking about how, um, you don't want to go after, um, keywords that have like more than a million because mm -hmm. it's going to be harder to be yep. seen. Uh, one of the other things she shared, which isn't a hashtag thing, but I'm just remembering it now was, um, on your main feed, you actually don't want to do too many posts on it mm -hmm. because the longer it's up, the more reach it has. Mm -hmm. And the minute you put a new post up, that one goes away a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know any, anyway, but really I'm getting yeah. after is the hashtags here because a lot of guys don't know what to do, hashtags. self included. Yeah, so. keep it simple. Um, put your put yourself in the shoes of, of the, the end user. Okay. So at the end of the day, you want to be discovered by potential clients. And so, what what kind of what kind of inspiration or what kind of education are you giving you know your potential client and you know and what does it have to do with the post that you're that you're making mm -hmm. at the time so you know if if i'm you know if i'm a housewife and i'm wanting to do a backyard you know and you're going to start searching you know like a backyard hashtag yeah think for a half a second you know, what would I search to find what I want them to, to see? Back, it, first thing came to my mind, backyard ideas. Backyard ideas, exactly. Is, done. Or patio ideas yeah. or backyard inspiration or something mm -hmm. like that. So you could, and, and get, spe get specific like that. The, the algorithm behind hashtags is there's going to be some really popular hashtags. If you're doing a water feature, don't do hashtag waterfalls or hashtag water. It's too broad. You're going to be competing with millions and millions of posts. Okay. You know, you want to do, um, you know, get specific backyard water feature. I know that's really narrow and you might get really small, but like people are going to, you're, you're going to have a better chance of being. I'd rather found. have 50 of the right yeah. people seeing it. And especially than, yeah. at that early stage. Right. I'm also a huge advocate of like, we're in Colorado Springs. So I make sure I add Colorado Springs hashtag uh, and Colorado to every post that I make because I want to be relevant to the area that I'm in. Love that. And so... Um, and then I'm always using, you can always add a location, add a location every single time. That's just one more way to be found because you can start scrolling via another way to be found on Instagram is from the locations yeah. uh, tab. And so if they're just scrolling through Colorado Springs or Denver, whatever part mm -hmm. of town or whatever part of the country or world you're in, yep. you know, if that's going to be one more way to be discovered. It's funny. Cause when I was looking for, uh, a video guy. Noel, I remember, uh, and I didn't find him. I didn't find you on Instagram, but I, I found you through indeed. I ran an ad on indeed. Okay. But I, one of my first things that I did is I did go to Instagram 
and I searched Colorado photographers, mm -hmm. Colorado Springs video guys or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And I just didn't see anybody that, that, um, really jumping out jumped out at me. Um, and then what I did, we'll have to show this at some point, Noel, is your, your, uh, one of the things on Indeed, I said, Hey, send me, uh, what I say? One minute long, um, audition video or something, video. you know, look at my brand and make a quick video. And he was everything I was looking for. Um, and so, but anyway, but I did, my point here is I did go to Instagram yeah. because I was, that's where my mind went. I'm like, that's where creative people are. And mm -hmm. so I think you need to get your ass going on Instagram yeah, is what we're saying here. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I'm learning a lot today. yeah, <laughs> I got some non Instagram topics that I okay. want to talk about because you're here, man. Yeah, you're here. It. We talked about your lowest points. You talked about your team. Now we talked about your, you, in episode one of this, uh, you know, you, you were pale and had no clue what to do. You went all in on Instagram. Um, great support from your spouse and all that stuff. What do you tell, uh, there's a lot of guys right now that are in a similar situation. I mean, that's real. We hear from them all the time here in the fight. Yep. They're, they don't know the way out. They don't, um, and I, it's hard to put in words because I know you and I both feel it because we've been there. And a lot mm -hmm. of you guys watching are feeling it right now where you have no fucking idea what your next step needs to be. Like maybe you're, you have too many bills, you have too much debt, the phone ain't ringing a mu as much. Maybe it's, you're having a hard time building a team, whatever it is, you're struggling and you don't, you don't see, it's like you're tunneling through a mountain and, and you're waiting to break through and see a little daylight. What do you tell that person right now? about their business and just stay shit. In, just stay in action okay that's first and foremost like you can't stop moving even if you're moving in the wrong direction a little bit okay just stay in action why Be do you say that because uh, what is that isaac newton quote you know, yeah. like something in action has an easier tendency yeah, i think to it was gandhi who yeah. said an object in motion <laughs> tends to stay something in motion like and some shit like that right um, True. But, absolutely you know so if you're staying in action it, ideas and opportunities are just going to present themselves. Yeah. If you crawl into a hole, you're, you're putting yourself down to a path of, of failure. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you're in action, you're moving, you gotta, you gotta sidestep your ego when you're yeah. in those times and, and you're in survival mode and you really just got to take any job, anything that's going to just keep you moving towards that ultimate goal of what you want. And you just take it, you know, like I'm, I'm constantly advertising for what I want, but then I'll take what I can get. Yeah. You know, and so, and when you're in survival mode like that, you just keep going. Like if yeah. you're a landscaping company and you know how to hang stone, you know, advertise doing stone in someone's basement because it's cold outside and, right. and it's something easier that you can do. You know, just try and find a way to keep yourself relevant and just keeping things moving in the right direction. It might not be feeding the big part, but it's keeping the dream alive. And that's just going to get you to the next season or to the next opportunity to just get, you know, one step closer to where you actually do want to be. Yeah. Going. It's funny. You, you said just keep in action, keep in motion. Uh, when I was in a similar spot, like down in the depths many, many years ago, um, my coach at the time had said, you have to take this anxiety that you're feeling mm -hmm. and put it into movement. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to feel this anxiety. The worst yep. thing you can do is sit in the anxiety and the mm -hmm. stress. You have to move. Just and it was Use very it. similar to what I you believe, just said. I believe it. You yeah. know, and then I, I think it's also important to remember that feeling of how bad it sucks too. Yeah. Because you made certain decisions and certain, you know, and, and and maybe you did, maybe you didn't, because you know, I started my company with the last three hundred bucks that I had to my name. It's not like I just jumped into this game with a right. whole lot of money. I had to get momentum and I had to play the long game and I had to build on that compound effect. So mm -hmm. it's not like I just had a bunch of money just to keep in, I, I had to keep doubling down every right. single year. And, and sometimes you do go backwards and that's fine. <laughs> I, I love what you said earlier, um, about do overs mm -hmm. and, um, you shared about how don't ever stop selling. Mm -hmm. Don't ever stop marketing. Don't. And every year, those of you guys have followed the channel or the podcast for any amount of time, you know, every year I do a rant post where I yell at contractors because they stop marketing when they're busy. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's the worst thing. That's, I mean, we're, we're Matt and I, we're on the same page with this. Believe yep. me, we are all about scoring points every day. Mm -hmm. In fact, I did a post in our free Facebook group. If you guys aren't part of that, go to the contractorfight.com forward slash Facebook. Um, great conversations going on over there, but I said, 
How many of you have hit your fourth quarter sales goal? And the time of this recording, we're in November of 2020. And I said, how many of you hit your fourth quarter money goals? And there were a bunch of guys who were like, oh, I hit them. I hit them weeks ago. I hit them a couple months ago. Uh, I don't need any more leads. In fact, that's what my post was here, here, squirrel moment. I said, how many more leads do you need to hit your revenue goals for this fourth quarter? And a lot of guys were like, zero. I don't need any more leads to hit my sales goal. And um, and what they were misunderstanding was they they had already sold enough, got deposit, had work on the board to take them through December. But not into And the they're next, not, they, yep. and now yep. they're like coasting. And that's, mm-hmm. You know, I get it. We need some time off. We need some breaks. But guys, I'm a firm believer that I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're a home builder that's that's building, you know, a, um, you know, 5,000 square foot home and you do mm-hmm. a couple of them a year. You should be getting that cash register to ring every single day. You should have, the, you mm-hmm. should sell, um, you should market your business like your next meal depends on it. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to the sales process, you sell like you're independently wealthy, oh, yeah. right? Like you don't need to work. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about uh, building your team. We were out on my in my front yard a week or so ago, and um, and I said something about yeah I'm about to go do a Facebook live or something and talk about hiring and this mm-hmm. and that, uh, and I said a lot of a lot of guys need to treat hiring like they treat marketing where we always need that yep. influx. Uh, before we get into that though, did I dream this or did you get a couple employees because your Instagram account? I've gotten a couple because of Instagram. Like the, yep. and they moved here yep. to work for you because you do kick-ass shit. Tell us that yep. story. What's? I, I mean, just <laughs> just one more, one more level to the to the power and the importance of this Instagram stuff is, people are going to be inspired by what we do and and, you know, part of what I do is I'm always trying to push the envelope. I'm always mm-hmm. trying to just outdo. I'm in competition with myself every single day, and I just want to get better every yeah. single time. And so, you know, I've been landscaping and in this craft for 20 plus years now since i was 15 years old Mm -hmm. um and so i just want to build cool shit and so i think other people look at that and they you know they're starting out pushing wheelbarrows and they like being outside like they like that and then they'll find my account and Mm -hmm. you know and i'll just post like hey i'm i'm hiring you know dm if interested but then you know post our core values under that just to make sure that they fit and and it's, it, it's turned in, you know, I've hired three, one stuck, you know, just yeah. as, you know, it, it, just, just like when you're selling your company, you're yeah. going to, for me, I have yeah. to get 20 leads to get one project. Right. I have to hire 10 people to get one employee. Right. So, yep. you know, it's, it's a numbers game and you have to constantly realize that, you know, you have to constantly feed in that hopper too. I interviewed uh, 60 guys. We had a job fair in our old painting company. It was like 60 or so guys came through in these group interviews um, we offered jobs to three and one showed yeah. on day one, right? Yep. I mean, guys, that, that's just, that. and that yeah. was, that was like over a decade ago. Like it's just, you know, that's it's, how it it's, is. It's, it, you got to grind. One of these man. hires, the, the one that was local, Yeah, you know, I'm like, great. You know, I gave him a shirt and hat here, wear this on your first day. Never showed Never showed up. I even texted him. I said, can, can I at least get my hat and shirt yeah. back? And he's like, oh, I've been wearing it already. It's yeah. really cool. It's really nice. I'm like, I can just keep yeah, it. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> so, um, So yeah, again, another reason when you're building a brand, when you're establishing yourself as the expert, not just customers, but other people are going to be drawn to you. And it might be like you've been talking about how you're you're connecting with all these other people in other industries and other contractors. They might have, um, I mean, I've known this to happen where a guy will shut his business down because he's just tired of carrying all the weight of it. And And you might pick up a guy that owned a business, has certain area expertise. He doesn't want to deal with all the back end bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many reasons to be visible here. The the biggest thing when you're hiring is when you're the leader, when you're at the top, Mm -hmm. I think I I learned this one from Ed Milet. You have to build and paint a big enough picture and a big enough dream of where you're going with your company to where all the other people that want to work with you to where their dreams can fit inside of it. Yeah. And so the better the person, the bigger the dream that they're having. Sure. So that means if you want to hire better people, you have to paint a bigger dream. Love that. If you're not painting a big enough dream, to be like, you know, how inspiring is it for somebody to be like, yeah, come to come to work with me and you get to push wheelbarrows, you know, for right. 40 hours a week. Right. And, and maybe if you're lucky, I'll let you run the equipment. Right. That's fuck that. You have to prove like, yourself if you for prove six years, yourself right? For six yeah, years. Yeah. Like, yeah. I might trust you with that. Yeah. No, like, I'm looking for fucking winners. Yep. Fucking winners. Well, like, oh, <laughs> look at that. I'm wearing that today. So. And so, you know, like... I, 
and and winners want to fly. They don't want to be uh-huh. micromanaged. They want it to to go. And mm-hmm. so, you know, if you're looking on my Instagram feed, like my high end projects, I've got one guy that's in charge, and I let him do his thing. Now yeah. it took us eight years to get to that point of yeah. working back and forth and earning mm-hmm. that trust and doing things the way that we need to do yeah. to keep that professional product and, and image and experience. But like he's a winner and he yep. gets paid handsomely. Yeah. But guess what? My phone doesn't ring. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and so when I'm looking for people, I want people that are going to be more like that because guess yep. what? We can all grow together if we're doing that. And so part of the part of this social media stuff is you have to paint a big enough vision mm-hmm. for people that where they're going to get inspired to want to come work with you. Not just because you're building cool shit, but, right. but they're going to actually have a good life when they're working with you too. Well, if you think about it, will my life be better off if I go to work for Matt? Yeah. That's really what everyone's asking all of us yeah. as employers, right? Yep. Will my life be better off as a result of working with you, for mm-hmm. you, however you want to phrase it? So um, you mentioned a second ago, my phone doesn't ring, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and because your phone doesn't ring, you're freed up to work on the big things that you do that move, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons you're where you're at now in your business, yeah. the success you're having, the money you're making, the balance you have, all that is because you don't have to do all the other bullshit. And I don't mean bullshit like it's not important. I just mean yeah. it's not what your sweet spot is. No. And I've always felt like if my, the less my phone rings for my guys in the field, the more they're worth. Exactly. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. You got to get 20 leads to sell one project. Yeah. Okay. That reminds me of, um, you know, your numbers. Yes. Okay. That, and, and a few weeks ago or a couple months now or whatever, we were sitting out back. We were talking about some work that we wanted to do around here. It was great because he shin food me. He bracketed me. <laughs> um, actually, I think I said, okay, just bracket me now yeah. or whatever the hell it was. And you painted a high and a low and all this other stuff. And I chuckled. And then you said, you go, I bet you wish we would have had this conversation like four years ago before I knew all this, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, pay, I'm going to pay a lot more than I would have four years ago or whatever, but that's all good because you're fucking worth it. So talk Sure, you're just philosophy, your thoughts on the math. Numbers tell a story. Yeah. You know, and, and the, you know, and gross profits are going to lead to net profits. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, I could take this any, anywhere. Yeah. You know, I, I know my numbers inside out and backwards. And I feel like I can, I can, I've built a couple of spreadsheets from scratch to where once a week we sit down, um, and we fill out all of our gross profits and, and where we're at with all of our jobs mm-hmm. in progress. And we can, I can tell everything I need to know just by looking at a snapshot of the three yeah. crews that I've got going on. I might have six or seven projects going on. I do have three crews, but you know, it all, I've got, we work with subcontractors as well, yeah. but I can see exactly where we're at from a percentage standpoint. And I can just say, and then I can cross check that with uh, the overall forecast of, of the year and that's my that's my health barometer. I can look at that, and I just know you know where I need to put my attention to. You know? How often do you look at your your numbers and those sheets and things like that? Uh, I used to look at it every day, yeah. Um, especially when it was you know needed attention. Mm-hmm. Now I look at I look at the more of the micro level um, once a week, okay, uh, at minimum, and then the the macro level uh, once a month. Okay. So a lot of guys. Um, don't know where to start with knowing the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and you, you've been in our world for many years. And so you know this, you see the comments and the questions yep. guys have, and I need what to know my numbers. For this, what do you charge for this? What do you charge for But that? I need like, to know my numbers. Need, like yeah. if, you, if you were consulting a guy who's never done anything with mm-hmm. his numbers, yep. has no clue really, and you could just tell him, okay, just start with this. What that, would this be? <laughs> That's obviously a weak spot in your personality. And it's obviously somewhere where you suck and you don't want to do it. <laughs> Find a local bookkeeper yeah. that you can just have a standing meeting with, an accountability meeting for yourself, mm-hmm. and just go in and meet with that person every week. Yeah. You know, because if you're small, then sub it out. You know, once you get to a certain point, I know for me, I'm I'm disorganized. You yeah. know, I'm not, I'm scatterbrained, I'm all over the place. So my first key hire for the company was an office manager that did a lot of the in-house bookkeeping. And then we'll just turn that over to the accountant yeah. to, to make sure that the numbers are correct. But like now that person's tracking that. Now that person doesn't need to be there full time. Mm-hmm. They can come in 
once a week. They can come in. You can hire them on a just contract basis only. They can have right. their own company. There's a million ways to find that person. But you just got to create that habit of looking at it at least once a week and job yeah. cost whatever you're on just so that way you know that you're hitting your correct. I know you used to talk a lot about hitting a minimum of 50%, 50 yeah. gross profits, but you know I, I believe that that's different depending on what type of contracting right. world you're in. If you're in high service contracting, that better be 60 to 70% right. gross profits. If you're mm -hmm. in, you know, you know, smaller range type mm -hmm. of contracting um, projects, you better be hitting 50. Yeah. You know, I've got um, I've got some $300,000 jobs. If I'm hitting 40, 42, that's a win. I, that's a win. Yeah, I'm making good. And I, I know yep. that um, some of those 50% gross profit, that held me back a little bit because right. I felt like I was losing, even though I had a $300,000 mm -hmm. job and I was hitting 40% gross profit margins, I felt like I was losing. No, right. it all plays in. It's At the end of the day, gross profits are mm -hmm. going to be a key, uh, key performance indicator for yep. you, but like it's net profit at the end of the day. And there's, so. there's, a, there's, a, there's an asterisk to this 50% thing, mm -hmm. okay? You know, we've done a lot of content here around 50 and I stand by it. Yeah. That it's the fastest way out of the financial gutter it is. is raise your gross profit. Mm -hmm. Then you get to another level as a contractor where like if you don't know your numbers, fucking get 50. Yeah. Okay. But if you've got it dialed in, you're looking at your financials, it, things are reconciled up to date, this and that. Then it comes a matter of, okay, what's my overhead? What's my break even point? This and that. Mm -hmm. We used to do this. Like we'd shoot for 50. In fact, I was talking to a guy the other day who averages, you know, 50, 55, 60 on his projects, yeah. has an opportunity to do this one big ass job, right? Um, and we have a lot of people that get 50 on a big ass job. It's yep. not, it, that's great. A that's lot fantastic. of people. Yeah. But for this guy, he's um, it made sense for him to price it uh, at a 40, 45 for a couple of reasons. Number one, the 40 or 45 percent or whatever it was after all was said and done, was going to pay for two months of overhead all in one chunk. He could finish the job in like a three, two to three week period. And it was super low risk. Mm -hmm. Nobody was living in the place. There was no picky home. I won't go into a lot of detail, but mm -hmm. it's like back in the day, we would do a paint job. We had our retail stuff for the residential stuff, but then we'd have banks reach out to us and go, Hey, we got this empty house that it's a short sale. We yep. need a coat of paint on the inside of it. And I'd sub it out to one of our crews and we'd make an easy 35, 40, 40%, never set foot on the place. Yeah. It's low risk. Nothing's going to go wrong. So there's, there's a context. Okay. There's a dichotomy. <laughs> Ooh, big word, big man. Word. I got to look yeah. that shit up, man. Noel, do you know what that means? No, <laughs> he didn't know what scratch meant. Some scratch. scratch. Oh, yeah. Some scratch. You didn't know either, did you? Fucking young people. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. I mean, you, I mean you're, you are looking a lot grayer little, than you did five, right here, five yeah. years ago. Yeah, well, that's because I have teenagers. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Recently, somebody posted in our free Facebook group, um, boy, I wish there was a thing that allowed me to put my pricing on the website where people could build their own quote. Yep. Um, right. And I was like, Huh, shit, Matt ha Matt's had one of those for five years or yep. whatever, right? Four or five years. So um, what are your thoughts? Because uh, I've done some content recently about why I think it's a good idea to put your pricing on your website and stuff. Yeah. What are your thoughts around being just transparent in your pricing and all that? I mean, do it first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I mean, our most valuable commodity is time. And why would you want to spend hours and hours wasting your time with someone that's never going to be your customer? Yeah. You know, let them never even call you and waste your time if if they can't afford a five thousand dollar pond or a five you know whatever your service is going right. to be like don't even let them continue shopping let them waste your competitors time right and then you know and then that's going to allow you to provide a better experience for your client because they, they know what's going what it's going to cost and uh then you can spend your time working with them and doing a better job as opposed to wasting your time on the 19 other people that it's going to take to yeah you know, to get it yeah, I, I think it builds trust. I think uh, one of the reasons I gave uh, was that every time you create a piece of content on your website, mm -hmm. um, you're leaving a thumbprint. And one of the most searched things in any industry is how much does something cost? It shows confidence too. Right. You yep. know, that Bingo. you know your num numbers. Yep. And, you know, it, I mean, I've got a lot of, uh, there's a submission. I don't get a lot of submissions through that form. Mm -hmm. I get them through <clears throat> other parts of the website, yeah. but you know, the analytics still show that people go to that part of the website. And that just tells me that it's an educational tool and right. maybe it's a great dequalifier tool. Right. Yeah. And I don't hear from them because it's like, 
you know, and, and a lot of people don't know how to use it really. I right. feel like it's more for me. So if I need to do a screen share on a Zoom call on that first yeah. call, I can we can do that and I could load it up and and then as we're loading it up, because I'm looking at photos, they can see that and they can go, Oh shit, I'm at you know eighty to a hundred thousand right. dollars and it's like I thought it was gonna be twenty to thirty, you know, right. which is a lot of money to a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, this stuff is expensive. I've seen pretty much a hundred percent of the time those contractors that are really transparent about pricing when their phone rings, it's with higher quality leads. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And it's almost always a slam dunk in the sales process because if I know it's, oh, it's 20 to 30 grand or something like, mm -hmm. and I still call you, I still fill the thing out. I'm serious. Yep. I'm not a unicorn. You're, I'm not a tire kicker. Now we just got to yep. make sure that we connect on a, mm -hmm. on a, you know, on a personal level and, yeah. you know, you're off to the races. Anything else before we wrap this episode up that I should have asked you that we should have talked about, whether it's general business, whether it's Instagram, Anything that, that's itching at you to share? I think you just really got to have clarity of who you are and what you want to do with your company and what's your, what your business is going to look mm -hmm. like. So that way, you know, once you have that honest conversation of, of what you want it to look like, you can then start attracting the right people from employees to clients to come in and work with you that, you know, that way you can all go where you want to go and dial in your core values too. Core values was a huge thing for me yeah. to get that dialed in because it's just about of, you know, self actualization of just being confident with who you are and being able to share that with the world. It's a great filter for decisions and all those mm -hmm. things when you have those values yep. nailed down. Like, does this fit with who we are? Yep. Um, I mean, I could yeah. talk an hour on that. Right. You know, three hours. But yeah, yeah, I would say that, that those are some important things. Well, good stuff. Well, listen. Okay. Um, Matt, super appreciate you hanging out here today. Yeah. Um, where uh, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you? Maybe somebody watching this is like, shit, I want to go work for this guy. Or maybe <laughs> so, it's a consumer that's like, man, I want this guy to build some cool shit in my yard. Um, how do we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, the underscore yardist um, okay. or uh, the company page, which is Heiner Outdoor Living. And we appreciate you all hanging out with us here today. Matt and I have had a good time shooting the shit. And uh, you guys rock, we got a roll. We'll see you next time.